that when you lived in a log cabin or you lived on the outskirts on a farm, uh, you had to make your own fun. Oh, yeah. You were an original pioneer that came in and built your log house and lived off the land. You made everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you made soap, you made candles for light, and things like that. So. Does that come apart yet? I won't take it. No, I don't. I don't think so. They usually. Yeah, it should yeah, be a lever. Right? It should be a lever, but I don't know if it works yet. I'm not gonna mess with it. Oh, okay. I have never tried that. Where do you normally work? Here, here. or here. the other? Here. Yeah. Oh, but I, I have. I yeah. have spent a summer in the yellow house oh. and I have worked at the boarding house. Oh. Mm -hmm. So then I just learned the history of you know what they were used for and where they came from and, and that. Mm -hmm. Can you do any spinning? You bet. Oh you can do that. What I am working on is a combination here of wool and mohair combined. Oh. I raised fiber animals. I used to raise angora goats oh, yeah. and oh. angora rabbits. So mm -hmm. um, <coughs> the large wheel turns the spool. This is a pulley that turns it. And I take this carded fiber. It just attaches because it has little barbs on it that cling to each other so it grabs on each piece and then as the spool is turning it's putting twists on it and turning it into thread when i finish spinning one spool i'll take another spool and go back through the wheel with two threads the opposite direction that's called plying so if I have two strands, I have a two ply. If I do three or four, uh -huh. it goes up like that, uh -huh. line. So it's a lot of fun to do. This wheel was made by a gentleman who lived in Twig, Minnesota, and made quite a few for people that were in our fiber guild that were interested in learning how to spin. And then the basket here has different colors in it. Oh, uh -huh. Those are oh, natural yeah. dyes, like the gold. Mm -hmm. I will take these pansy flowers and boil them in water and then put my yarn in. And, and make your gold. Have a oh, okay. gold color. Uh -huh. And then I've done iron ore. I have birch bark, makes a beautiful tan. How do you do the black? That is a natural yarn. Some of those are natural. The fuzzy one on top, the white that you see on the very top there, yeah, that one is some way of dog hair. Some dog way. hair? Oh, I don't know. Yep. Never thought of. And uh, there's uh, a lot of people that are very interested in having uh, dog and cat hair. It's fun. <laughs> I always tell them, do not get caught in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> because it is the one thing we do not get out of the yarn. Oh, yeah. is, is, is the smell of a wet dog or cat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. You know, I mean, it's fun to have. Stay dry. Yeah, stay dry, <laughs> but in the meantime. And then I have samples here on the, on the trunk of different uh, plant fibers and animal fibers that... Um, that scarf, that gray scarf is from the Angora rabbit. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Angora oh, is oh, ten yeah. times warmer than wool. It's yeah. it, is, it is the warmest fiber to have. No. And it's not itchy either. either. Do you sell these no, too? You don't I, sell I any don't of them. Anymore. I do sell a wool yarn and different kinds of yarn that I make. And then I also got some exotic fibers because a lot of people are getting into camel hair and kiwi and yak <laughs> and uh, of course those are more expensive because they're coming from Europe and uh -huh. you know they only can gather so much of it so it's probably the highest price of the fiber right now would be these wild uh, what they call consider wild fibers <laughs> and then I have the camel which mixed with silk Ooh. and of course you know, different fibers make different clothing. You know, silk is different from how we use cotton. 
yeah. how we mm -hmm. use wool. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. The interest in fibers has become more popular because natural fibers breathe. Mm -hmm. And of course we went into a lot of polyester clothing we were talking breathe. about this. Mm -hmm. And you get overheated in it. Oh, oh yeah. You see mm -hmm. cotton Pure cotton has made a tremendous comeback in the last 20 years yeah. because mm -hmm. of that. Right. But I could remember when we had the polyester suits <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and by the time you got out of church, you were so, so hot. hot. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's our respect now for the natural fibers. And then here they would take a carded a little bit of and they would layer it two different directions and what they would put soapy water on it and rub and pat it until it turned into wool felt oh and that's yeah. how they made wool felt uh-huh hmm. and that's become very popular mm -hmm. with knitters today is to take real wool make something throw it in the washing machine and boil it and boil it and that's where yeah. the boiled wool comes it's from then exactly oh. Yes. oh so felt was important what they used it here on the range was to make boot liners. Oh, oh yeah. Because the the uh, shoes, boots were made out of the hides of animals. Uh -huh. So the wool was the liner. Mm -hmm. Maybe nice and warm then. Yes, very Easy nice. On the seat too. If you rubbed it over a bowl, you could make a hat. Shape it into a uh -huh. hat. Huh. Uh, big pieces, you could make blankets, you could make vests, uh -huh. and things like that. So oh, wool was really important. A yeah. very important commodity.